Now at five, one person is dead and two others injured as Wayne County law enforcement investigates an early morning drive by shooting. What we learned so far straight ahead. Plus, we're watching scattered showers and thunderstorms this evening firing up. We'll tell you how it could impact you. And later, people across the Pine Belt test their luck as the Powerball jackpot climbs. How they say they spend more than $700 million. Coming up, your news at 5 starts now. This evening, WDAM 7 News is proud to be on your side. With WDAM 7 News at 5. Today, one person is dead and two others are critically injured after an early morning shooting in Waynesboro. Welcome in. I'm Carrie Leggett Brown. Wayne County Sheriff Jody Ashley says the drive by shooting happened around 2 a.m. and Waynesboro Police Department wow. Public Information Officer Don Hopkins says units were called to the scene on Highway 184 near Deep Well Energy Services where they found multiple people shot. Victims were taken by ambulance to Wayne General Hospital. Hopkins says one person was pronounced dead when they got to the hospital and two are in critical condition. We're on your side tonight gathering more information on the shooting and we'll have more in our later newscasts. As a reminder, this latest shooting comes less than two months after three separate shootings in Wayne County sent two women and a four year old boy to the hospital, all happening within hours of one another on June 2nd. Now at the time, Chief Deputy Jason Wiggins said he believed they were all connected and said there had been dozens of drive by shootings in Wayne County over the last several months. You can read more about those cases online at WDAM.com. And this is a developing story in our area. You can stay updated on it and others in today's newscast by downloading the WDAM7 News app. It's free for Apple and Android devices. Turning now to weather, Patrick, the afternoon showers are settling in, especially here at the TV station. What is the rest of the Pine Belt experiencing? Yeah, we're seeing a lot of showers starting to develop this evening. We saw a nice little shower just pass over the TV station. More showers developing out towards Waynesboro, Laurel, and Columbia. In fact, let's go to Waynesboro right now. Look at the ominous shelf cloud again. Waynesboro, you got the shelf cloud. Uh, you had one yesterday, you got another one again today, and it looks very ominous and scary, but this is just a normal thunderstorm that's sitting on top of you. Compare that shot to the shot that we got out at the campus of a USM, where they're currently into the operating sunshine uh, out there. Not too bad right now, but here's a live look. Southern Pine Electric Radar will zoom in on those showers and thunderstorms, and we'll put them into motion for you. As you can see, the heaviest stuff is just to the north of Waynesboro. This is slowly drifting off towards the east. We got new development back towards the west across portions of Jones and Lamar County. We'll take a full look at that forecast in just a few minutes. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky leaves the NATO summit in Lithuania without an invitation to join the alliance. Still, President Zelensky is calling the two day summit a victory for his country and directly thanking the American people. Ukraine gained substantial security guarantees and aid confirmed by G7 leaders today designed to strengthen the nation's economic and military resilience against Russia's aggression and leaders have promised future NATO membership for Ukraine, but no timeline was given as world leaders balance diplomacy and global security, looking to avoid escalating the conflict with Russia. In Russia, the Kremlin issued a warning regarding the summit, saying NATO security guarantees for Ukraine would only endanger Europe's future for years to come, a warning that didn't dent U.S. resolve. We will not waver. We will not waver. I mean that. Our commitment to Ukraine will not weaken. We will stand for liberty and freedom today, tomorrow, and for as long as it takes. President Biden has one more stop on his trip. Helsinki, Finland, one of the two most recent countries to join NATO, along with Sweden. 
New questions are emerging about the secret investigation into sexual abuse, including rapes, at the Coast Guard Academy. According to documents viewed by CNN, the assaults were treated as minor misconduct by Coast Guard Command and were usually covered up, according to the investigation. Also, the investigation dubbed Foul Anchor ran from 2014 to 2019, but only reviewed sexual assaults from 1990 to 2006. Of the dozens of Old cases examined, only one person was ever prosecuted, and according to the investigation, the charge was dismissed when a court ruled the statute of limitations had run out. Now, many of the alleged perpetrators graduated and went on to high ranking positions in the Coast Guard or other branches of the military. The FBI director is defending the search of former President Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago home in testimony before lawmakers today. Christopher Wray tells the House Judiciary Committee agents wore plain clothes and tried to be discreet. Uh, this is his response to questioning from Democratic Representative Jerry Nadler of New York. Uh, I would not call it a raid. I would call it the execution of a lawful search warrant. Can you describe how the search was executed? Well, we had the case team, uh, you know, follow its standard procedure. It has sometimes been described as a SWAT uh, operation. It was not. There was no SWAT involvement. Ray is denouncing allegations investigators orchestrated the search for political reasons or wanted it to make Trump look bad. A congressional investigation has found some of the nation's largest tax prep companies spent years sharing Americans' financial data with tech giants. Now, the report details how TaxLayer, H&R Block, and Tax Act allegedly gave out sensitive information to Meta and Google without consent or appropriate disclosures. That's a potential violation of federal law. According to the report, the companies allegedly shared details about filing status, adjusted gross income, and the size of tax returns. Inflation in the U.S. cooled in June for the 12th month in a row. According to the Consumer Price Index released today, annual inflation slowed to 3 percent last month. That's a sharp drop from June of last year when inflation spiked to 9.1 percent, the fastest annual rate since 1981. And the CPI shows relief for shoppers as grocery prices stayed somewhat steady, ticking up only 0.1 percent. In less than five hours, the drawing for the more than $700 million Powerball drawing will take place. Our Hannah Hayes called up with convenience stores around the Pine Belt to see how ticket sales are going in the last hours before the numbers are drawn. What would you do with $725 million? Would you share it? Uh, several people have already told me when they make the purchase, I'm going to come back and see you once I win. I'm like, oh, okay, great. Some people have been telling us they'll share a cut of it and all that, but it's it's just fun, funny stuff and messing around, joking. And stuff. Ticket sales have soared today across the Pine Belt. Local cashiers say that even if they do not buy tickets for themselves, it makes them happy to see people are trying to win a fortune. Uh, it makes me feel really good because uh, I know it's probably hipping uh, the Mississippi numbers out in regards to them buying. Uh, I'm not a big buyer myself. But my brother and a lot of more the family in other states are. So they'll always have me to pick up them some um, and get them to them. So I'm excited. This Powerball drawing is the seventh largest, making Mississippi residents anxious for tonight's drawing. People from surrounding states have also come to the Pine Belt to buy tickets, hoping to increase their chances of receiving the lucky numbers. I'm a people person, so it, it gives me the opportunity to, to talk to people, meet people coming in from uh, other states passing through. So uh, I never meet a stranger, so it excites me to be able to talk to them and, and make, you know, have a conversation with them. As people flow in and out of the convenience stores to grab their tickets, many of them have the same mindset. I mean, it's just one shot. I mean, you could try and maybe if you win, you win. In the Pine Belt, Hannah Hayes, WDM7, on your side. And the drawing for the Powerball is tonight at 10 p.m. As flood waters recede, cleanup begins in Vermont, but state officials warn the road to recovery is long. Straight ahead. And we're tracking more scattered showers and thunderstorms this evening on radar. We'll track them and tell you what to expect for tomorrow coming up.